Thank you, councillors, staff and members of the public. I'll declare this meeting open. Sorry about this, I'll just bring up my agenda. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Wadandi Noongar people of the area and pay my res respect to Elders past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, former Mayor and Freeman in the city, Mr John Castrilli, in the audience. Thanks for joining us, John. Uh, a couple of announcements from myself. Um, we received, I'm just trying to get the exact figure, but uh, last week received uh, from Mr Tuya and Mr Martella a uh, cheque um, for the final proceeds of the Migrant Memorial. Um, I believe it was around about $15,000, which has been left to the city, which will go into a trust for uh, continued maintenance of that memorial. Um, so it was a great project, and thank you to those gentlemen and that committee for doing that work. We are all here. We have <coughs> decorations from Councillor Andrew. Uh, well, all the, all the decorations are there in front of us. Are there any other decorations of interest, councillors? Thank you. There's no questions from the public. Could I have confirmation of the previous minutes, please? Somebody happy to move that? Thank you, Councillor Plum. Second, Councillor Andrew. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. And the minutes from the advisory committees, councillors, somebody happy to move that? Councillor Kozasek, thank you. Second, Councillor Yip, thank you. I'll put that. All in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillors, we do have deputations from two members of the public here. Uh, Michaela Kerwin on item 10.1.1. Those who approve of that, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. And a deputation from Mr Brian Rediger on 10.3.6. Those who approve, please indicate. That's carried. Thank you. When we get to those items, we will call those members to present. Um, councillors, dealing and on that, dealing with that, uh, Michaela has messaged me mentioning she will be a little bit late, that it was the first item on the agenda, which I will be taking to the back of the agenda before the uh, financial item, so we'll deal with that one later, which is 10.1.1. The other items coming out for discussion are 10.3.2 which requires an absolute majority, 10.3.3, which requires an absolute majority, 10.3.5, requires an absolute majority, 10.3.6, Mr Renegar is speaking on that one, and then of course the uh, items behind closed doors will be dealt with again. Are there any other items for discussion, Councillor Smith? 10.4.1. Thank you. Any other items, councillors? Councillor Gasson? 10.3.7. Sure. Any other items, councillors? If that's the case, could I have somebody move that the remaining are moved on block? Councillor Plum, seconder. Councillor McCleary. All those in favour, please indicate. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. As mentioned, councillors, we will skip over 10.11 and come back to that at the end. Uh, we are on item 10.3.2, the writing off of accounts receivable, which requires an absolute majority. Councillor McCleary, happy to move. Seconder. Councillor Steck. Is there likely to be any debate, councillors? I'll put that. Those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Item 10.3.3, the Outstanding Community Service Infringements. Do I have a move for that? Councillor McCurry, thank you. Councillor Giles, thank you. Again, councillors, likely to be any debate. I'll put that. Those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, item 10.3.5, adoption of our fees and charges. We have an executive recommendation there. Is somebody happy to move that recommendation? Councillor Quain, is there a seconder? Councillor Giles? Likely to be any debate, councillors? There will. Councillor Quain, your option to speak. Um, it's self explanatory. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Giles?
the last few weeks, and I think um, we've, I'm satisfied that this is a, a reasonable uh, set of charges, fees and charges. I hope that we all agree with that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Giles. Speaker Ernst. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Through you. I do believe that uh, waiting for a workshop to March 2023 is far too long. Um, we need to ascertain as to how we derive the fees and charges. And if we are going to effectively continually putting up fees and charges annually without knowing how the fees and charges are derived, it is unfair to the community and the users to say that we have to wait until March of 2023. I propose that, with it, that it comes back uh, within three month periods, sir. So we're in June now. So I would like to make an amendment. So July, August, yeah. oh, say October, sir. To the October yeah. amendment. Um, and I'm seeking a second. Councillor Steele, just grab a seat. Would that be doable? Would that be that would be considered an alternative? I'm just thinking how we can how we can deal with this, and it's quite a significant change. The recommendation, so taking it as an alternative rather than amendment. Councillor McCurry, do you have a question? Yes, please. Could we, in fact, um, set about to uh, write another motion at a later date? Of course, we do have time to do and pass. Well, set with the fees and charges tonight. Deal with the recommendation. And the amendment that... Are you, are you asking these take separately, Councillor McCurry? Uh, yes, but next, in, in, a, in a month's time or so, that particular recommendation to actually uh, review when we do the fees and charges. And not, do, <laughs> not, not attempt it tonight. I see what you're saying, Councillor McCurry. Um, I think the best way to deal with this is we will take them separately because our fees and charges need to be adopted and advertised. Um, so what I'll plan to do is take one, two and three separately. Councillor Steck, I would suggest being a, an alternative recommendation that you fore foreshadowed. So if option three is lost, you can foreshadow that alternative recommendation that we bring it forward. Um, so I'd suggest in this opportunity now you can speak against that uh, and then we'll take them separately from there. Thank you, sir. I'm also proposing that there will be no um, charges increase in this annual um, in this period until such time as a report has come back before council. Okay, well that's certainly totally separate to the that whole alternative. That is very alternative. different than this So question. then uh, I would suggest in that stage, Councillor um, Steck, that you speak against the entire recommendation mm -hmm. um, and offer that as an uh, alternative recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, as I've stated, councillors, and through the Mayor, um, I think it is really unfair and unjust to the community to increase fees and charges when we haven't derived how we get our fees and charges against the community users and the individual users. Um, I also believe that uh, waiting till March of next year is ridiculously too long. I'm sure that we can get this done very soon, and the sooner the better, because then when we identify where the charges need to be uh, increased, by all means, then we do that, and we do that methodically through a thorough report. So, councillors, I'm asking you to vote this down and go with the alternative motion and be fair to the community and the users of the sports centre and every other facility within the city. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Steck. Is there a speaker for? Councillor McCurry. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm just looking through, because I wasn't expecting uh, to have someone speak against this, because we had workshop, excuse me, we had workshop this um, quite a lot, and, and each year we have been quite uh, responsible in the minimum charge. And I believe that going through it, if people will recall, uh, as we did go through it, it was done in depth and it was fair. And I believe that we should work through this tonight and my recommendation for us to support this, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McCurry. Is there a speaker against? So for us, you to uh, close Councillor Quayne, so we'll take these separately, uh, one, two and three. Councillor Quayne to close the debate. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I acknowledge Councillor Steck and, and Councillor Betty's um, um, 
comments regarding the motion. Um, I'm, I would please ask the council to please support this motion um, and consider what has been said. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Quain. I'll move item one. Those in favour? Those against? One against. Item two, those in favour? Those against? No, that's carried unanimously. And item three, those in favour? Those against? Four against. That motion is adopted in its entirety. You got those, Minute Taker? And myself. Thank you, Minute Taker. That is moved. <coughs> Councillors, 10.3.6, we have a recommendation here and some other recommendations in the report. Councillor McCleary. Thank you. Are you moving? The executive recommendation as written? 8.6. The, as written, the executive recommendation. Is there a seconder to the executive recommendation? Oh, a seconder, Mr Member. Don't we have a deputation? So sorry. Yes. Uh, sorry, Mr Redding. I'm very, very much apologetic. Um, Mr Redding. Thanks for pointing out, Councillor Giles. How Thank could you. I forget you? Brian? Thank you. For a short time there, I thought I wasn't going to get the opportunity to speak. Um, <clears throat> look, I will forewarn you that I probably need another minute past the five. So, uh, Look, I'm speaking against the Executive Officer's recommendation for Agenda Item 10.3.6 because it is grossly unfair and insulting to the ratepayers of Bunbury for the City to have recommended an average 8.6% increase in the property rates yield for the 2022-2023 annual budget. My reasons for making this opening statement are as follows. Number one, the proposed 8.6% rates increase was first made public in the Southwestern Times last week with Mayor Jason in the photo. Uh, it's the first time I've seen it. Um, I wasn't aware of any other previews or any community consultations on this important matter to date. It's further shocking to read the figures stated in the table in that section called rates yield increase on page 187 of today's agenda because it reveals that the residential rates increase will actually be much higher than 8.6% average. In fact, an unbelievable 11.9% increase in just one year for residential ratepayers. This is the base of the city. This is the main revenue source. And I find it insulting. While mixed business and city center slash special rate payers will actually have their rates reduced by 2.3% and 0.2% respectively. This is discriminatory. The city claims that these two classifications, the latter classifications, had their gross rental values, GVRs, reduced over the past five years. While residential properties have increased 7.4% in value in the same time. I highly question the accuracy of this statement, and I strongly recommend that Council should review this in detail. Number three, the Executive Officer has recommended option one, that 8.6% average rate increase, where elsewhere in the same section it states, and I quote, all services, facilities, and projects are currently included in the draft budget, and that the proposed rates increase, I quote, is based on a CPI of 7.6% plus an allocation of 1% to be set aside in specific reserves, unquote, namely for asset management and for new major developments. This is like having your cake and the icing too. That is, the draft budget includes everything, every single thing that's been considered to date, and there hasn't been any attempt to review or reduce the city's annual operating expenses and its very high employee costs as compared to other regional cities in WA. Hasn't the city ever heard of belt tightening, namely to curb its annual spend during hard times, like the current post-COVID era that we're in right now, when both our residential ratepayers and our local businesses are trying hard to get back to normal economic conditions? So why has the city, for example, assumed a higher rate of 7.6% for the CPI, when the National Australian CPI figure is only 5.1%. I question that. Number four, 
It's incumbent on all the members of council, every single member that's here, and the mayor as part of council, to pick apart this proposed high rates increase in option one, and to look at the gross unfairness of assigning all of the proposed, all of the proposed rates increase to residential property owners, and that includes fixed income residents, whilst reducing the rates for both businesses and city center special use. This is accounting at its best. There's no feelings for the community here on any of this stuff. This is just a numbers game. Number five, is the city considering any other sources of revenue, like higher fees or levies that might help to offset the extremely high rates increase? Is the city looking at postponing, or at least downsizing, some of its capital projects? None of this stuff is covered in what I'm reading in 10.3.6. Number six, from an operating budget perspective, I understand that the Harvey Bunbury Waste Facility is bleeding money like crazy, and that its operating costs have increased substantially. None of this detail is available to the public. If this is true, then a special task group should be assigned by council to investigate the problems and to bring its operating costs back under control, or alternatively, to look for other possible solutions for Bunbury's waste processing. Number seven, on a somewhat related subject, the ratepayers of Bunbury had completed a community survey that's included in the recently council approved strategic community plan 2032, and that defined the community's top five priorities as, I quote, number one, community safety. Number two, housing. May I have an additional minute? Sure. Okay. Number three, city center development. Number four, sustainability and climate change. And number five, tourism, which of course is near and dear to my heart. The 2022-2023 budget for Bunbury should also be focused on these five high priority community items. So perhaps some of the other projects, capital projects and the city's operating expenses for those projects should be put on hold for a while. I'm offering potential uh, alternative routes to go rather than just accept the executive officer's recommendation. In conclusion, my opinion is that all members of council, including the mayor, collectively have the re main responsibility and a lot of work to do to bring Bunbury's annual budget back under control. To even consider approving such a higher than acceptable rate increase, average rate increase of 8.6, and then to dump it all onto Bunbury's residential ratepayers is unconscionable. Any councillor who approves option one will certainly be subject to scrutiny by both Bunbury's ratepayers and the media. My final recommendation is that if it takes more than the three weeks up to the next council meeting on 28th June for both the council and the executive officer to reach a better solution, then they should take that time, they should take additional time to do it right. Please do not rush making a final decision on such a high rates increase until every part of the proposed budget has been thoroughly investigated, reviewed, and agreed to. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you, Mr. Redinger. Um, Councillor Giles, you were happy to second, just to clarify that point. Was that a question, Councillor Turner? So you can foreshadow a alternative recommendation, yes? I'd like to foreshadow a recommendation then. Option five. Uh, Councillor Turner, you're foreshadowing that uh, we that you're foreshadowing the motion if this is lost, then we will go to five percent. So I'd suggest that you speak against this when the opportunity comes there. But you foreshadowed that motion, uh, which means if this is lost, we will deal with that next. Okay, so thank you. Back to the order of debate, Councillor McCleary as a mover. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> and good evening, Mayor and Councillors. Setting the rate yield is the most important decision we as elected members do for our community, because once this rate is set, our finance department is able to set the budget for the next year and adjust our long-term financial plan accordingly. Rates are over 56% of the city's income. This is why it is imperative we get this decision correct to be able to progress Bunbury and attract people to live, work and visit here. But we all know that, right? The recommendation from our CEO and financial team is for the rate yield this year to be set at 8.6%. I support this increase. 
The community expectations are that the city completes, consolidates and delivers projects they have asked for and we have committed to do as well as to continue with major developments. A lifestyle rich in public facilities such as our skate park, hay park, our lovely play equipment in the parks, footpaths, break, brag, major events and much more attracts families to reside in Bunbury. And once we do increase our population, then the burden lessens. So what comes first, the cart or the horse? Well, a horse will not want to stay in a paddock without high quality feed and water, and they certainly will not want to pull a heavy loaded cart. Same applies to residents and potential residents of Bunbury. By providing high quality services and keeping the older assets or upgrading with new and expanding projects, all residents will happily invest in their city through rates. We do need to stay competitive with services and facilities or lose out to the likes of our neighbours, Bustleton, Harvey, for example. The city also has to cater for the 7.6 CPI rise, the increases in wages soon to be implemented, not to mention the flow and high cost of materials when we put out a tender for asset renewal, roads, building, repairs, electricity, and many more hidden costs. The assumption is 8.6 will keep this city out of the red and tracking positively in the long-term financial plan. That is 7.6 plus CPI, C, sorry, 7.6 CPI plus 1% asset renewal. We have not increased our rates basically for the last two years, hence the 8.6 coming now. It may not, the, the 8.6 we're putting through may not actually assist. Expenses may continue to escalate out of control, but what we do know is if we choose anything lower than 8.6 this year, Bumby's future progress will ground to a snail's pace and will not be as attractive or vibrant as we planned and we will be debating for an even higher increase next year to catch up. Yes, 8.6 rate yield seems high, especially for pensioners. Here is an example for residential rates, including the increase to reassure you. I live in a house in Hakia Street, Hakia Crescent, Bunbury. My rates in round figures last year were $1,600. An increase this year of $8.6 in dollars is $137.60 extra per year. That is an extra $3 per week to cover the increase. As a part pensioner, I received the state government rebate of $800. This reduced my rates considerably. The rebate is available to all pensioners every year and is on percentage. I ask support the increase in the rate yield, not only as a councillor supporting their local government, but as a resident investing in Bunbury's future. This increase is affordable and if there are businesses or residents who will find paying their rates difficult, the city has in place or will negotiate on a one-to-one -one basis a payment plan that they will be able to afford. To leave this responsible increase until another year is totally irresponsible. We must deal with it now, otherwise we are just kicking the can down the road and I know ratepayers will not be pleased and would find us reckless to do so. We all hate increases. Golly, I purchased a beetroot the other day and it had gone up 40 cents a can, putting fuel in my car, nearly $90 a tank talk to any community member and the first thing they will say to you is, oh no, not another rate rise. However, when you actually get into the conversation with them about the improvements over the last few years, they begin to see where their money is being spent and do appreciate and I believe are proud of the better Bunbury we are creating for them and visitors. Whatever we hope to achieve or promised our community as candidates lies with this important decision tonight. I doubt anyone promised to put the brakes on in regards to progress towards building a better, brighter and exciting Bunbury for all of us to enjoy. Our CEO through the Finance Department has worked with us over many weeks and prepared a draft budget that reflects a rate yield of 8.6% is what is required if we are to continue to progress with our community's expectations to deliver the services and projects we promised. 
Please do as our CEO and financial team have recommended and vote for the 8.6 rate yield. Increase building a better Bunbury responsibly. Thank you, Councillor McCleary. <coughs> Councillor Giles. Well, how do I follow that, Mr Mayor? That's pretty <laughs> um, impressive uh, coverage. So I'll just make a few, a few points. Uh, the, the CPI in WA was actually 7.6% this year, the highest of any state in Australia. So that's why it's 7.6%. Plus the 1% which, which we agreed to some years ago as council to put aside for asset renewal and maintenance. So that 1% that goes towards you know, making sure that our gardens are looking nice, that our facilities are kept in good repair, etc, etc. If we don't have that 1%, all of those things fall into disrepair because we don't have the funds to do it. So. Um, this, this is a bit of a perfect storm, it seems to be a popular phrase at the moment, but we do have this perfect storm of coming out of COVID where we literally did not increase rates, uh, whether that was a good or not decision at the time, that was the decision made at the time, so now we're desperately playing catch up, uh, along with the, GR, the revaluation of properties, uh, and we all know what the housing uh, property, the market is like at the moment, both in the rental and in the, in the selling. House prices have gone through the roof, as have rents. So this is why those uh, revaluations have gone up so much in the in the residential. So uh, I know it, I, I hate to say the terms, uh, the words, 8.6%. But in reality, if we don't do this this year, we will be next year looking at something. Uh, we'll be looking at a deficit, or we'll be looking for at, at a worse budget with none of the things that we wanted to do. Our gardens maybe not being mowed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. I think it's only responsible, as Councillor McCleary said, that we do this now because it's it's not going to get any better. Petrol prices have gone up. All of those things, uh, Council's not immune from that. Every truck that goes out to collect waste or makes a, fixes a road, they're all subject to those cost increases, including salaries, petrol, construction um, material, etc., labour, etc., etc. All of those things impact on us, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot more than 8.6% in this coming year. Uh, I'd, be, I'd, I'd bet a lot on that. So I, I know it's, it's, it's a tough decision, but it's a tough decision now that might help next year and the year after, because if we don't do this now, our, our rates in the coming years, as have been forecast by the CEO and, and the team, will have to be higher than they will need to be in, in coming years. We, we, we're not going to be able to escape from that. So. I, I think the, the fault was in previous years where we kept rates to the lowest we possibly could with all good intent, but now that it's come back to bite us. And I think we have to bite the bullet at some time. And if it's not now, when is it going to be? When are we going to you know, have ratepayers calling us and saying, well, you know, can't you fix this, can't you fix that? And we're going to be saying, well, we don't have anything in the budget left to do those things. So I, I urge you to think about this seriously because I think it's very important that we take this step now and, um, and not leave it to future generations. That's my, my worry. Putting it off to future years is only going to make it more difficult for future years. So I would urge you to support this rise. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Giles. Uh, I was looking that way. Councillor Turner. Two family incomes who nowadays you can't get full time jobs. 
jobs. You get casual jobs. You're lucky to get 25 hours work. And then they go pay annual leave. Or sick days. So you've got two people working in casual jobs trying to pay for a household or trying to pay off a mortgage. And then now you're going to throw more money at them and say pay this. We can cut. They all do their budget and tighten up things and figure out what they can and can't afford. Cut costs on other things. Then the city of Omni has to do the same. I don't care about the tourists. Other times I do, but when it comes to rates, I care about the residents. I don't care about attracting people because we don't do a certain development. They can wait. We've got lots happening at the moment. Let's finish what we've got. Let's finish some projects. Just put some others on hold. We don't need no beach pool to attract tourists. What we need is the residents to be able to afford pay for their mortgage. It's just, I feel sick even saying 5%. There's no way I could look anyone in the eye with an 8.6 rate rise. But seriously, think about it. Really think about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Councillor Turner, is there a speaker for... I'd like to suspend standing orders so people that do want to... I think it's very important to hear um, people that would like to speak. Um, if I could advise, potentially maybe just suspending the standing order on order of debate. Are you happy with that, Councillor Steele, to make sure we keep some formalities? Is there a second, uh, Councillor Plum? So second that we... <laughs> We suspend the standing order of order of debate, so people speaking against and for can do. All those in favour of that? That's carried unanimously. Uh, Councillor Plum, you had a question? Okay, yep, <laughs> Councillor Plum, turn your microphone on, but I'll, I'll fill that one for you. And uh, in, in answer to that, I did watch the meeting last week. When you don't turn your microphone on, it is very hard for Mr Brown, who's watching at home, to uh, see what's happening. So make sure we do that. So the question was in regards to the GRV and what city the, the, what the role of the city plays in that. The city doesn't have any role in the GRV. Um, it was postponed two years ago due to the city's request at the time. So it's been five years since we've done our GRV. Uh, effectively, the, we have to pay for it to get it done. Uh, they come along and determine what the, what the value is of, of properties. So from five years ago, Brian, and I can't see there behind the podium, but uh, that is what's come back to us. Um, you can apply, uh, any resident or any ratepayer can apply to Landgate or to the, uh, to the uh, department to get a separate valuation, but the city has no control over it and we base our rates on that GRV. I think there's anything else acting CEO to add to that? Cool. So, uh, order of debate is suspended, so we can have any speaker for or against this recommendation. Councillor Andrew. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just uh, sorry, seeking some clarity. Uh, was a motion foreshadowed officially? A motion has been foreshadowed by Councillor Turner for option five, I believe you said, Councillor Turner. So, if this motion is lost, we will go to that one. Thank you, Mr Mayor. That's all. Speaker, oh, either speaker. Just a speaker. Councillor Steck. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm speaking against the motion and supporting 5% pay rise. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't call it a pay rise. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's terrible. I should say rates increase. Um, first of all, uh, this, this all came about from, from the one rate in the dollar. And, and a couple of years ago, some people in the light industrial area were paying like 33% on their rates. And it was just outrageous that that occurred, but it did. Um, second of all, I too want to see some authority measures inside council. Um, I really haven't seen proof of that. Um, and one of those is the changeover of vehicles and the particularly low kilometres that we have on them. I think that we should keep them uh, longer and we'd be saving ourselves probably, you know, at least half a million dollars a year. And that's a, that's a substantial amount of money. Um, some of the projects are state government projects. They're, they're, not, they're not council projects, per se. Um, so, again, we could save um, 
you know, I can calculate up to $2 million there. Um, and I agree that we should be putting some of our projects back another financial year. The market at the moment is extremely tight to develop anything. The cost is astronomically going through, some say, up to 37% on some developments. So I think that the only real commitment we've got is to Hay Park to start this year. And I think that that's all we should bite off and that, that we can chew. The rest, I think, we should postpone to the following year and only for austerity measures for cost savings because it, clearly they are going to go through the roof. Um, and also, this phrase of COVID catch-up, I'm not really sure where, where that comes from because we really didn't do an awful lot of development in using our 1% of, towards um, infrastructure. We really didn't do any major developments over that COVID period. So uh, there's no such thing as our rates needing to catch up because our costs were considerably low because we really only were you know, doing the, the, the bare minimum uh, throughout the city. And I just think that uh, you know, today the, uh, the Reserve Bank announced 0.5% increase in everybody's lending costs. So automatically, households who have mortgages, their lending costs have gone up 0.5% already. So there is an impact out there, and those that overstretch themselves through the, the, uh, the low purchase in price for, for housing, some of the suburbs uh, are going to find themselves in a pinch with four sales. So those out there that are cashed up are going to have a bit of a field day. Um, and I also believe that, uh, uh, that um, we should also look for um, ways that we can improve our productivity inside. So not only inside the, the, the council, so not only just reducing our expenditure, but also looking for better ways that we can actually do things that don't cost internally uh, more than what it ought to sh and, sh and should do. And so um, I'm not sure that the community is, is going to go down the path of saying happily invest in our city. What they do do is invest in the city for, for the purpose of the greater good, but they're not always happy about it. And, and I know several people that don't actually use a lot of the facilities inside the city, but, but are also you know, contributing to those. And um, I just urge the councillors to really consider um, this potential rate rise and the effect that it will have on you know, the, the residential component. And, and I really do believe we need to revisit that one rate in the dollar because it's really caused um, a disparity throughout our community. So please vote this down and go for 5%. Thank you, Councillor Steck. Is there a speaker? Councillor Smith. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I wasn't going to speak for 8.6%, um, but I've listened to the debate and I've got a feeling 86 is not going to get through anyway. However, I would like to make a few comments in relation to what has happened. I believe we are a really responsible council. We've been dealing with this issue, this issue for several weeks. Um, we have had extensive discussions over the last two months. The, on Friday, a few of us put in um, some notes on what we could cut out. So we are responsible. I'm mindful of the fact that I don't want the city to go backwards. I want the city to go forward. And the work has been done that this is, the, um, is, this is what is the acceptable rate. Now, I understand it probably won't get through. However, I think it needs to be said. I agree with Councillor Giles where the West Australian inflation rate is ex actually nearer 7.5 than what the, the national rate is. As Councillor Stickers said, interest rates have gone up today. It's not getting any easier for the city. Costs are going up everywhere. If we want to maintain the standard, we have to consider a decent rate rise. It's very sad and I understand I'm on a fixed income myself, but I'm putting that aside because I'm interested in the good of this city rather than personal, personal effects. And as Councillor McCleary said, we are going to be in a position to help people who might find a bit of hardship. I don't want to say much more other than to say that I think 
We are a very responsible council. We have talked this through for weeks and we're not putting forward things that we haven't talked about. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Is there another speaker? <coughs> Councillor Gassett, indicated first. <coughs> Speaking against the motion, Mr Mayor, or the recommendation. Also, I'm going to foreshadow a motion to actually have a recommendation to go to 3.1%, or in real terms, 6.5%. That, um, <coughs> as you mentioned, include, that you we'll, include as GRV. Sure. As mentioned, uh, Councillor Gassip, we will deal with the previous foreshadowed motion yep. first. Sure. If that's lost, you can then have that one. <coughs> uh, Mr Mayor, when we talk about all this, we actually, when we say 8.6%, as one of the deputations said, we are, in real terms, saying 11.9%, well and truly 50% over the CPI in Perth. Okay. So if you really want to go to CPI, you go to 7.6 minus a GRV increase, which is 3.2, 3.3, you end up with 4.4% yield. So we need to be uh, upfront with the public. When we say 8.6, we're talking 11.9%. When we say 5, we're talking 8.2. When we say 4.4, we're talking 7.6, which is the CPI. So, I, unfortunately, I don't have a big, uh, nice uh, letter or reading like the uh, previous councillor. So I'm just going to mention a few dot points, if I may, Mr Mayor. Now, normally, in, in, uh, if it's ordinary items that comes to us in a budget and we have to pass on the cost, I'd be okay with that. But there are extraordinary items that we're going to be looking at. And the elephant in the room, or the TX and the T-Rex in the room, is actually the Bunbury Harvey Regional Council, which we've already made provision in this budget for $3 million to, be, to come out of a specific fund, which is we're supposed to be used for something else. I won't disclose what that is. $3 million is equivalent to 7.5% rate rise in just this year. Next year, $4 million, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to mention that. T-Rex, when they start taking bites and they see more money, they come at you and they keep going. And they want to devour our, our finances. So we just need to be careful there. So uh, the, the bulk of the increase is going to be borne by the residential rate payers. The silver lining here is, I suppose, we have to look at the bright side, is the mixed business and the city centre special use rate payers will in fact get a rate reduction and that will be good for the business owners or where they may get a, either a reduction or a levelling off of variable outgoing. So that's a silver lining. However, they will be subsidised by rate payers by the, them taking all of the increase of 11.9% uh, recommended in this recommendation. I'll just go through just a few dot points. I want to expand on them, things that come to mind. Uh, austerity measures. When the going gets tough, the gov tough get going. Uh, still to go on on the rate payers' notices is the likely additional charges for waste on top of the rate. And there may be other possibilities I won't disclose here as far as levies. Uh, so there are, I guess when you're talking about the BHRC, I would also like to know uh, as a councillor whether we should be asking the rate payers to pay that legacy, for that legacy that occurred, that is occurring. And whether there's any financial, legal or personal implications for us. Uh, on the other hand, Mr, Mr Mayor, uh, we do want to try to get our uh, budget in order because I want to be positive as well. We're, I believe this region is on the verge of something big, the whole region, not just Bunbury. We need to have a healthy uh, balance sheet. I guess, as I said, the T-Rex in the room is at $3 million for me. What we, I believe we should be doing is, rather than costing the rate payers 7.5 per cent, go and wine and dine the state government, quadruple our efforts there, 
and see if we can get the funds from them, see if they can share a bit of that surplus love around. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gassip. Councillor Kozicic, do you indicate you were speaking? I would like to um, speak against the 8.6, but I actually believe we should be going for 6%. <laughs> Um, because I just don't think the 5% is enough. I, I'm very concerned that there's a term that we've all been um, banding around, like um, kicking the can forward, and I'm very concerned that if we don't have a relatively good rate increase, we are going to be looking at years of um, not enough money to, to do anything. We promised our ratepayers uh, projects. We've promised to look after our city. We make all these promises, and yet if we continue on this road... Um, the promises will be broken. I also believe that, that austerity measures, much as I hate, I hate using that term, as, as I mentioned to Councillor Quayne this afternoon, it reminds me of my grandmother who lived through two world wars and a depression and saved every piece of string and every brown paper bag and, and just lived so tightly. I don't think we need to do that, but I do think we need some austerity measures put in place to look at um, how we can go forward but still maintain our beautiful city and offer what we need to do. I, I don't believe 8.6 is something that the ratepayers are going to swallow. I think it's just a bit too much of a hike, but I would personally would like to see a 6% increase. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kozicic. For the Speaker, Cass Andrew. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor and Councillors. Um, the, uh, there's been a few um, terms thrown around at the moment, Mr Mayor. Um, uh, the perfect storm. However, I've been um, more thinking about we're in a bit of a dilly of a pickle. Um, option 5, and I'm very supportive of option 5, Mr Mayor, and there's no way I feel comfortable with 8.6, uh, plus the GRV, plus uh, the expected uh, rise in the cost of FOGO as well. Uh, we're really heavily increasing the burden on our community. And um, I'll probably keep some of my comments for the debate around 7.5. However, a 5% increase uh, is showing a $1.5 million deficit. So out of a 70-odd million dollar budget, including depreciation, we've only got to find $1.5 million to keep some relief for the community. At the moment, they're paying through the nose for every single thing that's happening. The, the South West Times the other day, they just announced putting up their... Uh, price of their newspaper, Mr Mayor, by 40 cents because they've had a 106% increase in the cost of paper directly related to um, the war in Ukraine. So everything's going up through. Now, we're one of the few organisations that we're lucky enough to not necessarily have to burden the community with all of that pressure that a 5% increase plus GRV is still probably too high. However, I'm aware that as an organisation we do have some of these uh, burdens to bear as well and we do need to keep our head above water. But I'll just remind you once again, 5% uh, is only a $1.5 million deficit and the motion for option 5 also includes um, uh, to recommend budget changes to address the resulting deficit in 2022-23 of $1.5 million and a cumulative deficit of $19.6 million over 12 years. So if we vote this down, we have got the option here to address long-term financial issues. No more. We're not kicking the can down the road. What we're going to do is we're going to go, hey, we're going to fix it. Because we vote for 8.6%. The long-term um, projections was that we needed another 6% next year. And that's just on what we know today. Last year, we weren't talking about 8.6%. So I implore you, as hard as I know it may be for some, Vote down this 8.6% and support uh, the alternative motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor Andrew. Further speaker? Nice tie, by the way, Councillor Andrew. <laughs> if I will speak, since everyone else has had a crack, um, I cannot support 8.6%. Uh, Councillor Smith mentioned we've worked through this extensively over the last few weeks. We have. Um, but it's still 8.6%. And that's what came to us seven weeks ago. And that conversation seven weeks ago was that's too high. So this is our opportunity to say back to our staff that we're not going to accept this. It is very high. It is a very difficult time. And there are a lot of things going up. We need to make sure that we, uh, Councillor um, Steck was talking about finding a better way of doing things. I believe that's finding uh, efficiencies. 
and it's something we need to do. We need to be better, more efficient in what we're doing uh, as a council. Um, we will have the pressure. There are pressures going on. So as a council, what can we do? What can we do better? As councillors, what can we do? Uh, Councillor Gasser made the, made the uh, point about speaking to the state government, speaking to the brand new federal government. How can we actually talk to them about finding other sources of revenue that we can put that we're not a burdening on our ratepayers continually, time and time again? Because as again, as Councillor Andrew said, if this goes in and then we find some efficiencies next year, well, we're still up that increase already. So we need to re request that our CEO uh, have a lower amount and he finds those efficiencies. And I know it can look scary looking at a 12-year plan when you, have a, when you reduce this amount, what it does in 12 years' time, but Councillor Andrews is exactly right. We'll find these efficiencies and we'll, be, we'll do better. And it's very important we do. We need, there's other ways we can do. We can increase our rate base. We can continue to try and drive investment in the area by increasing our rate base so a wider portion pays for, pays for the community. And I, that's nothing against what we're currently doing. We are doing some fantastic stuff. But as we know in this budget, we're not going out of our way to do new things. So effectively what we're doing is saying it's going to increase the do what we're exactly doing. I'm suggesting with the amount of money we've spent on some of the recent activities that we be more efficient in what we're doing. And I'm sure our fine staff can find that. The CEO's made that clear during our workshops that if you give him a lower rate, he'll find a way to make it work. So that's what I'm suggesting to do. We do like to compare ourselves to other councils, whether it's on our pay, whether it's on our uh, sitting fees or whether it's on the CEO's fees. And so when we compare ourselves to other councils, there is one council who has a similar kind of rate increase foreshadowed, but they have one of the lowest rate in the dollars in the state, in the entire state. We're nowhere near that. Some of our surrounding neighbours and some of the other shires around that are nowhere near this, 8.6%. In fact, when I've mentioned to a few of them, they can't believe it. Uh, majority of them around that 5 uh, and even less uh, percent. So if other councils are doing it and they're doing it well and they're not having to have these uh, crazy increases, well, what are we doing differently and we need to make sure we do that better. So I won't be supporting 8.6% and I'll be supporting the foreshadowed 5%. I urge you to vote against. Further speaker? Councillor McCleary. Sorry, sir, can I move that we um, continue debate through standing orders? Back to... Are you happy to leave it in case we have to deal with the next items, mm -hmm. Councillor Steck, and maybe after this item we'll sure. return? It might be the way to go, just in case the foreshadowed motion needs to deal with it. Thank you, Councillor Steck. Uh, Councillor McCleary, though, close the debate. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have many notes, and it's going to be all over the place, and I'm not going to apologise. I'm going down with the ship but I firmly believe that 8.6 is what we should be, is a responsible uh, rate yield that we should be doing this year. And the statement, and just looking for where I actually go, I appreciate, first off, I want to thank everybody for speaking. I appreciate everyone's point of view and expert knowledge on what the city can and cannot afford to do. And I find that the, I would prefer for myself to take advice of the professionals, of the people who are qualified and work in finance, who have the expertise that, uh, that they brought to our table to discuss with us, and they came up with, not, not to put money in their pockets or for their increase, but for the benefit of the city. So I believe that 8 point, if they'd said 8.5 or 8% or something like that, I think, oh, yeah, hang on a minute, they've just pulled something out of the air. They said specifically 8.6. And so that made me sit up and have a really good look at what they were wanting to do with that money and what they had to do with it. So I don't agree with our learned councillors in a s smaller um, rate rise. I, I believe that the 8.6 is correct. And... I say that because the statement, they can always come up with the money, is not very educated, okay? My kids used to say that to me, Mum, you'll always come up with the money. And yeah, I did, and it was most stressful, okay? Sometimes I didn't. COVID, someone was talking about the COVID, was uh, we continued on with our maintenance, we continued on with our developments. The skate park wouldn't be here if we hadn't continued to do that work, if we hadn't committed. And getting ready with Hands Over, we continued to seek out funds for Hands Over. And Hay Park, the beautiful pavilion that we got out there, we did that through our COVID. 
we were spending money. We weren't having festivities, but we were spending money that had been invested by our community through rates. So tourists, we don't need tourists here. Tourists bring money to our businesses. Tourism is extremely important to Bunbury because our business rely on these extra people, the foot traffic coming through the town. So to say we don't need tourists, is, it, it's, it just blows my mind away. I'm really sorry. The GRV, there's a decrease, especially in the city centre, because you can look in there and see how many vacant places there are there. So their, their GRV is not going to be high. You've got suburbs which will drop down. Yes, there'll be a couple of suburbs that will also have that increase, but they were in the lower end of the scale some years ago. So it's kind of, you know, the merry-go-round and the swing sort of situation. With your pensioners, and we can't, and I say this with empathy, I'm a pensioner, so that's why I feel I can say it. If you ask a pensioner for money, they'll find it, okay? You give them a good reason why you're going to do, what you're going to do with that money, and if they agree with you, they will find it. They are the best budget people there are. And for them, we've already got, and they're a minority, we've already got a situation. You can't, you can't specifically take one part of the community and hold the whole community to ransom, okay? You have to at least be compassionate and empathise with the people who are going to find it difficult and you deal with them, which, we, which I said in my report, that we, in my debate, that we will do a one-to-one -one with them. Worst scenario, like my mother did, she left it till she died and then it came off the estate. She never paid rates ever. So that's what she did. That was how she coped with it. You know, so that's the very end result. But, you know, the, the very practical lady as far as I'm concerned. So I, just looking through my notes here, uh, Mr. Mayor, with respect, you said a, a crazy, um, a, a crazy, crazy um, interest or a crazy increase. I think I wrote interest, but I meant increase. Words like that, they put us in a very professional light, I'm sorry to say. So I think we need to look at what we need to do here. I mean, the $191 that you're speaking of as the increase, that was the paper that told us that, Okay. Not everyone in sitting here is going to be paying $191. I'm going to be paying an extra $137, even less after the federal government come and give me my extra money because there's a percentage on the $800 that I'm going to get more. So that $91 is going to repair footpaths and maintenance and lightning and keep our pensioners safe. Okay, because they are unsteady on their feet. So if you've got footpaths that are wobbly, which will happen, we will cease to do that, we'll slow it all down, which we've been told, then you're going to have people going us up. Excuse the French. <laughs> so I really understand your anxiety over the 8.6. And I know it would be a miracle if I've changed your mind, more than a miracle actually, I think I would apply for a Jesus status. <laughs> but I would really implore you, please just reconsider again, because you will be having this debate again next year because everything is going up and next year our residents are going to be less inclined to be able to afford anything. And then we can look at, well, what have we got? How can we move things around a bit with our LFT? Not this year. This is not the year to do it, OK? This year, we need to do what we have to do, and the responsible thing is to do is to bite the bit and go for 8.6. I have spoken to 40 people, and they are not concerned, in fact they understand, though rather we didn't, but they understand why they have to have that rise and they didn't bitch about it. Thank you.
Thank you, <coughs> Councillor McCleary. The executive recommendation as written there, that Council will request the CEO, based on 8.6%. Uh, all those in favour, please indicate. One, two, three, four. Those against? Oh, that is lost. There was a foreshadowed motion from Councillor Turner for option five. Can we just get that one up? So that was four, uh, four, I believe, four in favour. Five in favour? Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to get the help of the minute taker. How'd you go, Liam? Councillor Turner, was that what you foreshadowed? Yes. Is there a seconder to that? Yes. Councillor Andrew. Did you need a for and against on the previous one minute taker? Got it. Well done. Councillor Turner. Five percent is enough. I'm sure if, you, if they came to us with 5% two years ago, we would have had our mouths drop down and we would have gone somewhere like 3%. Um, if you're going to build a home, ideally you want a you know, swimming pool, double glazed windows, double carport, beautiful patio, but you don't end up with that because you've got a budget, you've got to be sensible, you've got to figure out what do we really need compared to what do we want. You've got to look at your budget and afford what you can afford. And I have seen the staff come up with money in the past, you know, 400000 here. There's grants that they can apply for, state government funding. Um, there's money in reserves. So we're not exactly going to be broke tomorrow and be in trouble for the next 10 to 15 years. They can, always going to be able to budget and find the money. And they can just cut costs like we have to out in the real world. 5% um, is still, based on the average, $131 extra compared to 191 on 8.6. So $60 saving to the residents, but still 131 is a hell of a lot of money for most people to come up with. And we've got businesses who are still struggling, and I'm sure they would like to have a cut in their rates as long as, along with the light industrial area as well. Allow them to get back on their feet and get their businesses running up and get a bit more faith in what they're doing. I just can't stress enough about option five and not pushing it any higher, because people just can't afford it. And all they want is... They're rubbish collected, their curbs nice, and the surrounding areas parks. They're not asking for a beach pool or the youth precinct. You've got a small group that's always pushing for these projects. They don't care about all these big projects because they probably don't use them. How many people use the Southwest Sports Centre? Mostly Del Yellup residents. Yet Bunbury residents are paying for it. How many people can afford to go to the Bunbury? Arts, the entertainment centre. I know I look at the tickets and think, oh, you're a bit out of my price range. But we have all these things here for everyone to do, but the rate payers don't necessarily attend all these places. Yet they're the ones forking out all the money for them. So please back 5%. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Andrew. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Turner, for foreshadowing this alternative motion. Um, our CEO passed on a quote recently uh, from Holly Ranson, which said, leadership is not for the faint of heart. And um, that's true, and it would have been uh, a big, bold step for us to, um, as councillors, take 8.6%. Um, but as leaders, it's also very bold for us to put forward a 5% and ask the organisation... Uh, to look at areas where we can cut back and make some savings to help support our community. Housing was a very important part uh, in the strategic community plan and it rated very highly and housing affordability 
uh, is continuing to be one of the, the crisis areas in the southwest, especially as we keep trying to play catch up um, with uh, housing stock. 1.5 uh, sorry, 1.5 million dollars isn't hard to find. Desmond Tutu said, "How do you eat an elephant? And you eat an elephant by taking one bite at a time." We've got a very large organisation um, with over 350 staff. We have uh, the Breck, we have the Bragg. We've got all this regional infrastructure um, that we pile heaps of money into, support the Bunbury Geograph region. If we make small, tiny little cuts across the whole organisation, you'll find very easily uh, that there will be negligible. Uh, impacts to the community. So I think it's very important uh, that we are bold today, that we don't kick the can down as everyone is talking about. We're not kicking the can down. What we're instructing the organisation to do is not do what everything it's done for the last few years, which is ask for more, get less, but then ask for more next year, is to give us a long-term, 12-year long-term financial plan with today's rate setting. So we have an opportunity here to set the long-term financial position for the city and say, you know, we're not going to take 8.6% today, we're not going to be looking for 6% next year. We want to make a substantial um, uh, stand here and that we're going to move forward and we're asking the organisation to prepare for the future. So please support this, um, this motion. Please support all the ratepayers and not just the ratepayers who live in Withers and Kerry Park. Uh, who we often think are the ones who struggle, but all the ratepayers are struggling uh, around the organisation. You look at Brain Spice recently announced that their, their uh, income has been dramatically decreased. Uh, a lot of businesses are doing very well, but a lot of businesses are also doing hard. So we have to take into account all of this. 5% is an extremely large increase based on what we've done before. And I think that's pretty bold, but it's also bold to come back and go, hey, look, we really need to take a long-term look at the organisation because for too long we've just worried about year on year. But we've been working very hard uh, as a group recently. We've been putting in a lot of hours. I can assure you, as you will uh, test, Mr Mayor, we've all been putting in a lot of hours in this budget. And it is great to see that the councillors are so committed and have been putting in the hours. But we need to continue this and have a real good strategic look at the organisation. What are our priorities? What are the, the, the plans for the future? What does the community actually want? And what are we actually providing for? Are we providing for Bunbury residents or are we providing for the greater Bunbury metro area? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, I just have a question, if I may. Sure. Thank you. Uh, does the 5% really mean 4% then with the 1% for the, uh, for the um, uh, maintenance and so on? Is, or is it 5% then 1%? So what's the, what's the actual figure? I think total is 5%, but uh, Acting CEO, can you clarify at all? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, well, I suppose that would be up to, uh, to Council to make that decision. But uh, at this stage, I suspect it'll be 4 plus or 1% with half percent going into asset renewal <coughs> and half percent into... Uh, major projects. Based on, uh, sorry, just to answer that again, based on what it, the above recommendation, rec executive recommendation, Councillor Smith, with the 8.6, that include the one, so I'm assuming the 5% would continue to include that one. However, it does talk about the fact that um, the CEO to address the resulting deficit, which may result in some of that kind of information anyway. So this would be total yield increase of 5%. Councillor Steck. Mr Mayor, can I please ask that we um, terminate the words after budget, can we have a full stop there and remove changes to address the resulting deficit 2022-23, 1.5 million, and the accumulated deficit of 19.6 million over the 12 years of the draft long-term financial plan? Uh, reason being, this is unsubstantiate, uh, unsubstantiated, and we never run into deficit. And as the CEO said, with a lesser amount for the percentage. Uh, of rates, he will find a way to make yeah. the, the, the sure. budget balance. So, could just, I just ask grab that a, those grab a wordings seat. be removed, please, sir? It's offensive. Um, just grab a seat, Councillor Stack. Can you just clarify the exact before going in back into debate? Clarify the actual words you wanted changed there. Um, and I will keep, sorry, sir. And also to keep and to recommend budget changes. Full stop there, and yep. then remove everything else after that. Um, well, 
the council requests the CEO. Considering it, yeah, and to recommend by I'm happy to if you're happy for an, to second that Councillor Plum as an amendment because I'll take it as an amendment because I don't think it's changing. It's just effectively getting rid of some words which don't change the um, overall scheme of it. So I'm happy for that to be accepted. So that's moved by Councillor Steck and second by Councillor Plum. So just get rid of that side of things. I had prepared on this one. Well, no. just, just one sec, Councillor Plum. I just want to get this right first. So can you just remove the wordings completely, please, Minute Tiger? Councillor Steck, that was your intent? Yes, Mr Mayor. Yep, I'm happy with that as a amendment. So that will be the amended recommendation um, Minute taker. So if that's approved, that will form the alternative recommendation from there. So that was moved by Councillor Steck and seconded by Councillor Plum. How about uh, Councillor... Well, we now have a mover of this <laughs> amendment, so Councillor Steck. Councillor Giles, you'll, you'll get your chance. So Councillor Steck. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I, th I thank um, Councillor Plum for seconding the motion. Um, as stated, uh, in requesting the change of wording... It is because that there is no such deficit at this point in time. So to have that in this uh, as a rec record of this meeting is absolutely inaccurate, and uh, it's silly to have it up there. So I'm asking every councillor to please support their changes. Thank you, Councillor Bum. All good, Councillor Giles. Sorry, I should have asked if you had a question prior, but there's a question of speaking. Speaking against, oh, well, we, we're, we don't have order or debate at the moment, so uh, you're happy to speak. So, did you want to speak? Was there any other speakers? So, just to clarify, councillors, this is an amendment. We'll vote on this amendment. If this is approved, that will then become the alternative recommendation, which was moved by Councillor Turner and Councillor Andrew. Councillor McCleary. To make it more Pacific, since we are dealing with Pacific now, can we have it that there is based on a 4% increase plus 1% asset renewal. I think we leave it as that, Councillor McCleary, at this stage. That's exa that was how the initial executive recommendation was done um, and that we're dealing with that yield increase and how the CEO comes with that. Was there any further speakers to this amendment? Either way. Councillors, I'll put the amendment. Those in favour, please indicate. Those against? Councillor Smith and Councillor Curry. So that amendment now becomes the substantial motion, which was moved by Councillor and Councillor Andrews. So we're back to that. Have that minute taker? Okay, so we're back to this 5% we're dealing with. Councillor Giles. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr Mayor. Um, I would like to foreshadow an alternative motion if this one was lost, yep. to um, change it to 6%. Um, <clears throat> and the reason um, for that is that... Um, I think that's a bit of a compromise and I think it's still um, palatable and it leaves us in a far better position. Even though we've taken out the words <clears throat> that have now been crossed out, it frightens me to think of what's going to happen in, in the years to come. Um, because I would almost bet my house on it that the um, CPI next year is going to be worse than it is this year. And then what are we going to do? We're even in a worse state because we're so, so far behind the eight. Well, if it's 19.6 million at the end of uh, six years or whatever it says, 12 years, it'll be twice that if we don't do something about it. So I think 6% is a 5 plus 1, which I think uh, is a reasonable rise and within the realms of uh, respectability. Um, I I'm <clears throat> was not at all convinced that we would, we would get the 8.6%. I'm, I'm quite fine with that, but I do think 6 uh, would be a reasonable thing. So I'm going to vote against the 5% and turn to motion of 6. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Giles. So we do have the two foreshadowed motions to deal with if this is lost, which first will be Councillor Gassips and then yours after that. <coughs> Councillor Bum. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, 
it's probably a good thing that uh, order debate is suspended because I'm not really sure if I'm speaking for or against this. <laughs> but uh, what I'll say, um, councillors, I think 5% is about the right amount to cover inflation at the moment. I think that if you look at the ABS data, there's some really heavy spikes for WA around construction and transport, not just being fuel but also being um, shortage on production. And that if you have a Toyota, it will know uh, that's really great for you, for your resale, but also trying to get one is very difficult. And that's driving the prices up. And I think, by and large, the West Australia being uh, much higher than other states is due to the, I think, my view, the delay in the border opening and, and a lot of the demands getting labour and all the rest of it. All that to say, I think it'll settle down. And I think that uh, 7.66 is a uh, much higher amount than what is probably likely to, to settle down to be. So um, to reflect that in the budget would probably be to a far too high a grab um, from rates yield. Um, but I am concerned that uh, the 1% for our uh, reserves would come out of the five or out of the total increase of revenue because um, we have had um, such a hard time over the years increasing our reserves and I think that our ability to maintain the assets we already have is probably one of the biggest challenges that our finance team have. Um, and there's been a lot of comment about um, deficit, surplus, and so on and so forth. I think at the end of the day, yes, our staff do an amazing job to balance the budget. But um, we rub Peter to pay Paul, um, things get deferred, um, you know, other priorities uh, take precedent and uh, require funds uh, in a budget that we hadn't foreseen and so on and so forth. So yes, uh, budgets do get balanced, um, so there needs to be you know, all of that taken into consideration. But I think 5% is the right amount for increase to cover CPI and so on and so forth, um, but I am concerned that uh, uh, we, we wouldn't have enough um, there to, to adequately top up our reserves. So I would um, support 6% uh, in this case. So councillors, I think that's the number we need to settle on. I'll be voting against this motion right now. Thank you. Further speaker on this particular item, councillors? Councillor Smith. Still unclear yep. on whether we're voting for a 4% increase in rates with a 1% asset renewal. I'm still unclear on that issue. And I really don't want to vote on something I'm unclear on. So is that what we're voting on? 4% rate increase with a 1% asset renewal. Is that correct? Is that what we're doing? I can see her. Uh, yes, that, that's always been the intent. The figure that we put up is the uh, figure plus one percent for asset renewal and major projects, half percent for each one. So four plus plus one, Councillor Smith. In answer to that, four plus one. So in answer to that, yes, four four percent increase in terms of general rate, and then one percent the asset to the renewal. This quick question, if I may, is the decision to put uh, 0.5 into asset renewal and 0.5 into major projects. Is that a decision of council? It was. <clears throat> Is that still relevant, Acting CEO? Are you aware? Maybe Mr Ranson? Uh, yes, as far as I'm aware, it is still relevant. We are still uh, operating that way. I think it was a five-year fixed thing when we did it. So, yes. Can you can speak, Councillor McCurry, yes. Um, this, you haven't spoken against this particular recommendation, so yes, you can. Yes, yes, of course. Yep. You can only not speak against the same item, Councillor, no, and this is a different I'm, item I'm than we speaking, dealt with a minute ago. I'm speaking against the 5% yep. increase in property rates, well, in the yield, rate yield, because it's been a number that has been plucked out of the air tonight and we have not discussed it thoroughly, and so I have my reservations that this will be suitable. Yes, it might be palatable to our community, but I think it will be detrimental to the city on a whole. Thank you. Councillor McGarry, first speaker. Mr Mayor, I just want to say that 5% was not plucked out of my brain this evening. I've been working on this for weeks Thanks. and weeks and Thank have been you. through the budget several times with several other councillors. So just to make Thank, it very, th very Thanks, clear in this Steck. room. Thank, yes, thanks, Councillor Steck. Is there a further speaker? We were, oh, Councillor Gaston. I'll speak, Mr. Um, wasn't going to, but there's now two 
for shadowed motions at 146%. So I don't want to risk not letting this one through. I might have to withdraw mine, but I'll speak first. Uh, of course, if there's appetite to go to 3.3, I'm happy to forward it. I think uh, you can read the room on that one, maybe, Councillor. Yeah, Council. I'm sort of reading the room. But uh, So we, what we're talking about here now is 8.2%. Let's make it very, very clear for the public. It's 8.2%. It's 5% plus 3.2% for the GRV. So you'll be paying 8.2% more plus... Plus, well, it's true. The, the figures don't lie. Here it is, 5% on the table on page 187. 5% is 8.2% average rate increase. That's the, the uh, mean average. Okay, thank you. So, uh, plus, likely increase in the rubbish rates. 2.5%, so we're talking maybe 10.7%. Plus, and this is my own speculative, my own opinion, not the council's position, plus a likely levy for rubbish, potentially the next year. Two, three, four percent, who knows? Okay? So what we're talking about now, what is in front of us now, is likely to be 10.7% extra in rates. Point of order, Councillor McCurk. Thank you. We're talking about our rate yield. We're not talking about our services charges. Thank you. Sure, Councillor McCurry. Uh, I think Councillor Gass is referring to extra costs that may come around, which have come up in debate, and Councillor yeah. Gassip is using his uh, using his own um, opinion, which he's raised, and he's talking yeah. about overall impact on the ratepayers, I believe, but maybe just make sure we stay on that point, Councillor Gassip. Sure, Mr Mayor. I'm just actually repeating what's on page 187 in the executive recommendation in the table, where it says 5%, 8.2%, and then uh, on the same rate notice, you'll receive rubbish rates. So we need to consider overall impact, I believe, overall impact on the rate payers. And the overall impact is a minimum, minimum of 10.7% in real terms. So uh, I guess tough times, Mr Mayor, brings out the creative juices and that brings in innovation Innovation leads to efficiencies, and I'm sure I'm sure everybody loves the challenge of being more efficient. One of the things that efficiencies creates is actually a lower carbon footprint, believe it or not. You know, instead of getting 300 pages of agenda printout, maybe we can save some money there, or uh, driving around a little bit less, or you know, creating more efficiencies in the fleet control, a little bit less petrol. So well, I've lost my seat now. So, <coughs> Mr. Mayor. <laughs> As I said, I reckon we can go lower. I reckon we can go to 3.3%, which is, uh, in real terms, 6.5%. I believe I can actually justify that to this meeting, but read in the room, I'm not going to go there anymore. So what is going to 5% do also in terms of our judiciary role to make sure we manage ratepayers' funds in the most efficient manner? I ask you that question. But one of the things it does is it, it incentivises us to go and look for other revenue or income, including, yes, being chummy to the state government or the federal government, as you also repeated, and seeing if they can help, especially with the Bunbury Harbour Regional Council, which does have an impact of 7.5% on this budget. So I'm going to now uh, withdraw my... Uh, for the foreshadowed motion at 3.3%, even though I believe it can be done. But at the risk of it, this one not going through, I'm going to support this one. And, uh, and see if we can get this one through, give the ratepayers some relief, you know, half a percent today in interest rates, that's about $125 extra a month people have to pay. Right. And put out the challenge to all of us, staff, councillors, to see if we can create efficiencies and keep the pressures down in a very tough, uh, I suppose, cost of living market. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gafford. Gassip. <coughs> Is there a further speaker? A question? Yes. Mr Mayor, can you tell us what the... Please stand, uh, thanks, Councillor McGrew. Oh, sorry. The going rate 
for uh, inflation is at the moment? 5.1% uh, is the Australian in, 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 and 76 in WA. What's my question? Because <laughs> my next question is, so how can we afford a 5%? Okay. It's up to Council to decide that. Uh, is there a further speaker? <coughs> Councillor, yep. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, everyone's talked about the pressures that are coming for all of us, no matter what, piled on top of each other. They actually add up to quite a bit at the end of the year. Two cars, electricity, mortgage rates going up. So I'm not going to talk about more of those, but the money we're dealing with here is residents' money. It's not our money. And I don't think we've tried hard enough to get those costs down. I think we have staff who are really able, where we're not a lot of the time. But I think together we can do better. I think at 5% we can do better for the community and I think that's what they expect of us. Um, I don't think we have the luxury of, of saying, well, you know, this year we'll put it up and next year we'll put it down. And I think we just have to, you know, as the Mayor said, if, if other local governments are doing it differently, we should be able to do it differently. We've still got a couple more workshops to get through and I don't think we've really cut and slashed as much as we could. So I think that's an opportunity for all of us at 5% um, to aim towards that. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Is there a further speaker? Councillor Quinn. Thank you, Councillor Quain. Is there a further speaker? Councillor Turner, before you close, so again, councillors, we are dealing with this amendment, which is now the recommendation. If this is adopted, this will be the adopted recommendation. If this is lost, we will refer... There's now That's now been uh, pulled out, so we'll refer to Councillor Giles's um, alternative. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Please support the 5%. 6% is not a compromise. Remember, 5% is a lot. If this was a couple of years ago, 3.5 would have been a lot. So going 6 is still out there. The CEO will always deal with what rate you give him. He'll figure it out. So we don't... That's their problem. <laughs> this is our problem of setting the rate. So please, let's just get this done. 5%, even at that... Residents are still going to be stressed out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Turner. <clears throat> I'll put that council request to see or prepare the draft 2022-23 annual budget based on 5% increase in property rates yield and to recommend budget changes. Those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in favour. Those against? Sure. Five against. You can you just keep those up for the minute taker? Happy land. Should be five. Yep, that's right. Thank you. That uh, recommendation is accepted. And I'll acknowledge, I think our youth mayor just entered the room. Yeah, behind the podium there. So welcome to our youth mayor. We haven't got to your item yet, Michaela, but you were approved to speak to it when we get to it. <coughs> Uh, councillors, we are on to 10.3.7, which is our financial management report. Uh, this was pulled by Councillor Gasser. Do you have a question, Councillor Gasser, or are you speaking against? I might just sorry, I might just get it on the table first, Councillor Gasser. That's right. Is there a mover to this, Councillor Andrew? Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor. Did you have a, a question, Councillor Gasser, or are you speaking against? Speaking against. Sure. Councillor Andrew, anything? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just uh, moved as a procedural. Sure. Councillor Yip. Councillor Gasset. Uh, 
Mr Mayor, I'd, excuse me for pulling that out, but I've felt that I have to, with all good conscience, raise this matter. So, uh, so on page 12 of 20, or in red, page 235, there's an item line, item PR5073. which is to provide financial support for the Bunbury Harbour Regional Council, $233,000, which is a pretty much a ongoing, part of an ongoing instalment. Uh, Mr Mayor, I mentioned T-Rex before, okay? And I'm not trying to be funny, I just, it's probably the best way I can describe this. I personally don't believe that the ratepayers should be paying for what is occurring at Bunbury Harbour Regional Council. And T-Rex has just been fed a little bit of uh, flesh here and, they're gonna, and he's going to come back for more. $3 million this year, $4 million the following year, which is what's been approved. And Councillor Smith. A point of order, please, Mr Mayor. Um, I'd like to point out that the Bunbury Harvey Regional Council is actually owned by the ratepayers of Bunbury and the ratepayers of Shire of Harvey. Sure. And... From my point of view, Councillor Gassip, this is that the report be received. Um, we're not making decisions on the spending at this stage. Um, so I'll advise your discussions around that, that we're receiving this report. We're not making decisions around the actual spend in this regard. But carry on. I'll try to carry on, Mr Mayor. I, I guess all I was doing was just putting in my protest vote in that I don't support ratepayers paying for this <clears throat> Bunbury Harbour Regional Council uh, legacy. And yes, I understand it's owned by Bunbury and Harvey. However, the, you know, the, the, the motion we passed in November, 23rd November last year, even though people think it's unconditional, it's actually conditional upon two things. One is getting the loan sorted out. Point of order. We've, yeah, we've okay. already debated this in previous council. Again, this is only to recognise yeah. it's passed. Yeah, Councillor Gasso, I'm not going to let you continue on this, this motion because this is actually adopting, well, noting what's been spent out of the current allot allotted budget. You, notwithstanding your comments can be made at another point. I've got two more. Uh, I'm not going to allow it. Sorry, Councillor I Gasso. So now I won't be speaking about that anymore. Two more items. I want to just ask questions. Are they questions? Yes. Sure. Uh, page 236. Yep. Mr Mayor. PR3196, conduct detailed contaminated site investigation for NUTSIA depot. I'm just wondering uh, if there's any projected budgets for that. And the other one is the... We'll, we'll deal with that one first, Councillor Gassip. Uh, Acting CEO, right in your area anyway. Uh, thank you. Uh, three, Mr Mayor. I don't have the detail at the moment. That's been, that uh, uh, process needs to be submitted through to the Department of Water and Environmental Regulation and from there... Um, there'll be outcomes that we'll need to discuss with the uh, council at that time. Further, uh, you had a follow-up question, Councillor yes, Gasson? the last one uh, is uh, PR 4214, Investigation and Management of Council Contaminated Sites. Uh, I know you haven't got the final costings, but I'm just wondering if there's any projected budgets, uh, implications in the long-term financial plan, what they might be. Sure. Acting CEO? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's a there's a number uh, that particular uh, PR number deals with a number of contaminated sites across Bunbury. It's not just uh, just an individual one. It's used uh, for a number. Um, as you would be aware, there are a number of old landfill sites um, within the uh, city of Bunbury's boundaries. Um, the staff at the moment are gathering that information. Where the intent is to come back and talk to council around what the long-term implications of uh, remediation on some of those sites are. So uh, expectation is that we'll bring that for a further discussion with, uh, with Council in the very near future. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Gassip. Further speakers, questions? Councillor Andrew, in close. I'll put that re executive recommendation. Those in favour? Those against? Councillor Gassip, one against. Uh, Councillors, 10.4.1. Uh, it's been... Oh, yes, that was brought up to mind. So would you like to move that we return the standing order of order of debate? Is there a seconder? Uh, Councillor Steck, those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Thank you very much. 
Uh, 10.4.1. Did you have a question, Councillor Stress? Are you happy to move this? Happy to move, uh, Councillor Smith? Yes. Is there a seconder? Councillor McCleary, yep. And I'm guessing you pulled it, Councillor Smith, to speak to it? Sure. Microphone, thanks. Microphone, I beg your pardon. Um, in 2014, the Council made a decision that broke the heart of many people in our arts community. And many of the volunteers that served on the Management Board of Bragg and the Collections Committee. Many of those people I know did not go into the gallery for years um, as they had for, in that institution they had loved and worked for for many years. However, that's past history. But what is not past history is the cost that decision made to the ratepayers of Bunbury. When the Management Board was dismissed, all volunteers, the board was raising a third of its own funds through corporate sponsorship, through philanthropic organisations, donations and so on. I've got an old annual report from Bragg in 2009 where the total expenditure on Bragg was $536,000. 170000 of that came from the Art Gallery of WA through the state government and 202000 from the City of Bunbury. That financial year, the Bragg Board raised $164,000, nearly a third of its own funding. Now, if you multiply $164,000 by eight, which is roughly the number of years since 2014, and we've been talking about rate rises and all the rest of it tonight, the rate payers have had to fork out extra, because of that decision, $1,312,000 to make up the shortfall. And this is going on 2009 figures. I've just received this afternoon what we currently spend on Bragg, and it's $788,000. And that includes our money and the 160 or 70,000 from the estate government. Now, I'm not saying that's the price, but a few, that a third of that is $262,000. It's nearly $2 million that that board had saved this council that we've had to put in ourselves to make up for that decision. And that was what was wrong with that decision because there was nothing in place. Nothing in place to continue advancement of the gallery and the collection despite the amount of really good people who've continued to run the gallery since then. Notwithstanding the moral ag argument in axing 15 or so dedicated volunteers and trashing tradition, it is the financial cost of that decision. It is well known fact that corporates rarely donate to local government. They do donate to community run and independent organisations. In a tight budget, council needs to explore every avenue to alleviate the pressure on its ratepayers. You also cannot dismiss the economic contribution that dedicated and skilled volunteers contribute to the city. You lose those volunteers and it comes at a cost. You may be aware that in 1949, the philanthropist Sir Claude Hodgkin donated 20 works of art to the then town of Bunbury. Those works were initially looked after by the Society of Artists. Then when it became too much for them, it was managed by the collection committee. It was formed to look after those works. It was completely volunteer committee. And when I joined the group in 1979, the committee ran on a grant of $2,000 a year from the council. Bunbury then did something that no other regional town did. They built on that collection to one that is probably the best in regional West Australia, if not and, and verivaling some of those in the eastern states. It's now an asset worth millions to the city of Bunbury. It was all done by volunteers, by advocacy, fundraising, organising exhibitions, lobbying, door corporates for donations, and for picking the right artworks at the time, which have now appreciated in value. The reputation of the collection was such that when Alcoa Australia was redoing its offices in 2008 and they wanted to get rid of paintings, so donated a significant amount of works to the city collection, and these were works of Australia-wide reputation, and further enhanced the collection. 
Volunteers are vital in any society, and I hope this gives us a gives you a sample of what can be done to enhance our city. Mr Mayor, this is a very important motion, and I understand there may be some amendments uh, to this, but by passing it, we can move forward in helping brag and taking a little of the load off our ratepayers, which has been amply uh, it's illustrated tonight by the debate on the rates. We don't need to go back to the past, but we can look forward with innovation and new ways of doing things, but we must also learn from our mistakes and put this sad history behind us. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Smith. Councillor McCleary. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, a advisory group, I think, for Bragg would be excellent. Getting the community involved once more is um, something that I, I really support. So I will be supporting this recommendation. Thank you. Is there a speaker against? Mr Mayor, can I please uh, seek an amendment? What's your amendment, Councillor Stack? Um, I, I've spoken to, through to the art community and the community as well, and they want something with more teeth. So they want to go directly from an advisory group to a board. Because um, this yeah, is actually yeah, no, going no, to be... Councillor Stack, just take a seat before you start debate, because that's, again, very different to this recommendation. Um, we'll take it as an alternative rather than an amendment, because it's going directly against what the councillor... Well, not directly against, but very different to the direct... The, the, um, executive recommendation is. So again, I advise you to speak against this and foreshadow that. Councillor Giles. Could I propose a different amendment, please? Um, I, I sure. Know what it is, I'll, so I'll hear it first, yep. <clears throat> so, in point number three, um, could we please change that date? We've been waiting for this for probably two and a half, three years now. So, to put it off till next year is a, is a big stretch for me. So, I'd like to amend that date to October 2022 instead of June 23? Yeah, Councillor Giles, um, I think this question was asked next week around the dates. Um, Acting CEO, could you just comment whether or not that would be... We were supposed to get it at the beginning yeah, of last yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Giles. Whether that's achievable... Um, yeah, whether that's achievable, first of all. Sorry, through the CEO, I might refer that to Mr Barber. Um, through Mr Mayor, the intention was the advisory group would prepare the long-term strategic plan. The terms of reference have to come back to Council in August and then the advisory group has to be established um, and then the advisory group has to be given time to prepare the long-term strategic plan. So I wouldn't have thought that October would be possible. Um, the intention was if the document is completed um, earlier, it can come to Council. Um, there's, there's nothing... Uh, preventing it coming back early, and I would imagine if the advisory group um, is going to be a, a, a passionate group and they'll want to get on with it, there's no reason it can't come back sooner, um, but I wouldn't want to put undue pressure on a group that hasn't formed yet. Yeah, Councillor Jones, I'm just thinking, because if that terms of reference need to be advertised and then advertised for members of that group, um, that's what I'm concerned about. If we set a time frame which can't be set up, but... Um... It's gone on for a very long time, as you know, so... Yep. I'm happy to take that as part of the amendment. If okay. I agree with what um, Councillor Giles is saying, this we have waited I'm, a very long time. I'm certainly happy to include that as part of the recommendation if the mover and seconder are happy with that. I don't think that needs to be an amendment if the mover and seconder are happy with that to add at the latest. It doesn't completely uh, solve your problem, Councillor Giles. Um, I have another amendment though. I want a point four. I want Are you happy with that for point yes. three, Councillor Jobs? Yes, okay, right. your amendment for point four. <clears throat> point four, the advisory group to become a permanent entity to brag. I think that's I think that's very similar to what Councillor Steck is is sort of moving towards from what I feel. So again, I, I'd be suggesting that'll be an alternative, mm -hmm. and we deal with that through. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Councillor McCleary. I, I, I don't like those You don't words. like that? No, I would prefer to say council um, before, before... Before June 22? Oh, yes, because before? That, that sounds like an order. And, I, and the, I mean, the advisory group hasn't even been um, okay, okay. Yep. chosen yet. Or before? And, yeah, it's rude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it has to go through... 
prior. That's a good word. Well done, minute taker. Are you happy with that? Happy with that. So back to where we were, Councillor Giles. Yeah, I'd suggest that'll be an alternative, your suggestion in that regard. And no doubt some of those things you discussed may come up as part of this. So, but I'd recommend if that's what you want endorsed, um, speaking against Councillor Steck. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Finally. Um, look, uh, I think the sentiment in the room is very, very close. And that is, is that uh, to come back to June to 2023 is, you know, it's almost a year away. And that's not giving enough traction for the, the new entity to get any traction at all in delivering what they want to deliver, and, and, and that is to hit the ground running. Um, a lot of these passionate people are very, very aware of the arts. They are very learned in that, that area. They know exactly what um, artworks are, as Councillor Smith has already stated, uh, grow in, in value. Um, they know what is far more important than some of the um, things that, that others may choose or select. And, and I do believe that if you go down the path of making an advisory group to come back to council by August, then again, that's sort of council putting the handbrakes on a board which is already very learned in knowing what they want to achieve. And given the historical facts from Councillor Smith already, it's very prudent to say that if you're going to wait 12 months, well, then you're going to lose all the assets that this board could could actually provide to the community and also the income, also the arts, all, all of their expertise. You're going to lose that over a 12-month period. We've already lost it for years and years since we disbanded the board. We need to go back to where it was, Mr Mayor. We need to repair what we took away. We need to give these people and passionate people and very, very clever with the arts. And, and I've sat on that committee for a, long, for a while and I tell you, they taught me a lot about arts. So I can tell you that the board is the way to go. You need to forget number two. You need to go to number three and change the wording, Mr Mayor, to say, or even keep number two to say, go directly to a board, not to an advisory group. An advisory group has no teeth, no teeth at all. And unless, unless you have a board, they can't go out and get the philanthropy, get the word out correctly, philanthropic donations that they are clever and good at getting and they know the doorways to get them. And as Councillor Smith has already pointed out, they're not going to give those to, the, to our council regardless if you have an advisory group. The entity is still council. They're not going to do it. They're going to walk away. So your 12 months is just wasted. So can I please ask that we amend number two to simply say that, uh, that we uh, advertise for a, a membership to form a BRAG um, board and they can come up with their own terms of reference and they can hit the ground running and, and report back to council. They can hit the ground running with what budgets they will require. They can hit the ground running, running into their developing their long-term financial plan, of course council can help. Of course we can. That's what we're there for. We're an advisory role. That's what we do. And we also equip funds. We make sure that someone's not, you know, taking off with you know, ill-conceived ideas with the funds they've gained. So we are the overarching body that oversees uh, all of the funds and all of the artworks that they, they are. So I'm asking Councillor Smith and Councillor McCleary, would you be happy with that recommendation and changes, please? Councillor Stang, I still take that alternative because changing it from a BREC advisory board to a board, advisory group to a board would be completely different to this exec recommendation. So I would still take that as an alternative rather than amending this one. Speaker for this recommendation. I, no, I'm not going to speak for it. Um, but I would like Question. to. Did um, Councillor Giles tell us what her number four was? I, and yeah, that, I, sorry, it, I missed that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I've taken it as not an amendment as an alternative, but Councillor Giles, you're foreshadowed. A bit different because I said not change it to a board, but have the advisory board, advisory group as a as a permanent group. As a permanent group. It's not going to get any Sure. 
Is there a speaker for this recommendation? Councillor Yip. Thank you. The community consultation that was done pointed out that people were hesitant to form a board straight away, which is why I assume the, um, the consultant uh, recommended an advisory group to work through those issues. So uh, I think we should listen to all the consultation that was done with the community and with councillors and with staff. I know this is a very um, heated topic for a lot of people and that the original board um, is very nostalgic and dear to a lot of people. Um, I think the working group or the advisory group would work really well to work through some of those issues, as I've just said. Um, you can't just form a board. I mean, everyone would want to be on the board because everyone loves to be part of BRAG, including volunteers. And boards are not only made up of art specialists and people with lots of knowledge and um, philanthropists, but also people from the community, people from all walks of life make up a board. So I think that those are some of the things that the advisory group would be part of in uh, making recommendations about whether to go to a board or not. And a foundation is completely different again. I'm pretty sure we voted to form a foundation, not a board or an advisory group, um, a couple of months ago. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a speaker against? Oh. Sure. So if um, number two is then voted down, um, then would then... It's three become been... irrelevant, and then we could um, then come up with the alternate recommendation that Councillor Steck has proposed. There's been foreshadowed a alternative recommendation for number two, so if we take them separately and two is lost, we can refer to the alternative recommendation being that development of a board. Any a speaker for? Oh, sorry, a speaker against. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I don't care much what you call it. It's what it does that's important. OK? Now, I always get a bit upset when people don't see the arts for what it is. It's not an affectation. It's an economic driver. It makes money for the city. People are interested in coming. So it's not just an affectation that the council wastes its money on. Um, I think the timelines are too long. I think we don't need to reinvent the wheel. The Art Gallery of WA operates under a State Act of Parliament, OK? All the staff members are state public servants. would need to change that. You, just, you can follow that model. You, you can cherry-pick from it. But the important thing is that currently, despite the, the excellent staff that have been there over the years, despite the current organisation, there is no one advocating, lobbying, fundraising on behalf of Bragg in, in, since the board was removed. And, that, and the, that's, that is the problem I see with, with, this, with, with not going ahead with some form of a permanent advisory group that, that will be advocating for the gallery. So I recommend this um, recommendation to the council because we need to move forward. As councillor quite right, Dick quite rightly said, the longer we take, the more we're losing money. I don't think we need till um, June next year. We know what the problems are. We know what the issues are. Despite all the fact I've thrown, thrown heaps of stuff away, I still could provide lots of stuff to get you moving. So I urge that council rec uh, vote for this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put number one, councillors. All those in favour of number one. That's carried unanimously. Thank you. Councillors, I'll put number two. All those in favour of number two, please indicate. Those against? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six against. Recording those, Minutaka, you got those? Just those against again. All good, Liam. Thank you. And I'll put number three, all those in favour of number three, please indicate. Those against number three. Councillor Steck, Councillor Kozak, two against. That's carried, councillors. Thank you. Uh, we go back to item 10.1.1. .1. Uh, 
What was that, sir? Oh. The youth precinct name. Uh, Michaela, you still there? I can't see you there. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned on the phone, and for councillors' knowledge as well, this item is dealing with a confidential item, so we, we can't talk about that. But um, you have five minutes, Michaela. Floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you need to turn that on, I think. Uh, Liam can do it. I think Liam might have it for you. Oh, is it all good? Okay, lovely. Um, thank you. So this will be quite brief. Um, I'm, yeah, the youth mayor at the moment. My name's Michaela. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the naming of the youth precinct um, here representing YAC. Um, we have gone through a lot of engagement and a lot of back and forward in the naming of the youth precinct, working with a lot of different community stakeholders with support from the council officers. And so we are very excited to be presenting to the name um, in that confidential item to you and are really looking forward to the opening of the youth precinct. So we just wanted to come and present deputation to council for the proposed name. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michaela, and thank you for joining us. Um, take a seat and we'll deal with this item. Uh, do we have a mover for this item, councillors? Councillor Plum and a seconder, Councillor Turner. Uh, is there likely to be any debate, councillors? If that's the case, I'll put the committee recommendation. All those in favour? Those against? One against, Councillor Steck against. That's carried. And from my understanding, councillors, that name will be revealed at the opening. So, sorry to the media. You'll have to wait. <coughs> councillors, um, we're coming to closing to the public. So, for all those who have come for a few items, unfortunately, we've got to bid you farewell now. We will be uh, announcing the um, results uh, when we come back after those points. So, feel free to join around. But I'll ask those from the media and those from the public to, well, I have to move that somebody does that first. Somebody happy to move, we go behind closed doors. Councillor Andrew, Councillor Plum, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. So the recommendation was we endorse the name as recommended in the report. Oh, give it. I just made that a bit up. So the recom... The rec but sure. Yeah, so the, the, recommend, the recommendation says we adopt. Thank you, members of the public. Now you get to listen to me read all these recommendations word for word. So while you were going behind closed doors, item, and I just will just ask councillors to please be patient with this while we get through it. Uh, item 15.1.1, .1, which was supply and delivery of the construction landscape and materials. Uh, recommendation was moved by Councillor Second, second by Councillor Plum, and was adopted unanimously. And that Council 1, um, pursuant uh, to RFT 2122028, supply and deliver of construction landscape and materials except the tender from both Carboni Bros and Fatina Pry Limited, um, the Silver Spring Trust, as Deputy Azzi and Sons, for the prices of $163,730 and $66,882.60 uh, per annum, respectively, subject to minor variations to be negotiated with accordance to Regulation 20 of the Local Government Functions and General. Regulations 1996. Uh, and two, delegates power and authority of the CEO to negotiate and agree with both Carboni Bros and Depiazzi and Sons, minor variations in accordance with Regulation 20 of the FG regulations, subject to there being sufficient funds available uh, within the approved expenditure budget and the variations being limited to 10% of the contract value. Uh, and three, subject to resolutions one and two, authorise the CEO to enter into a contract with both Carboni Bros, Carboni Bros and Depiazzi and Sons to to provide the supply delivery of construction, landscape and materials. And four, following entry into the contract, negotiate variations with both Carboni Bros and Depiazzi and Sons to the respective contract, subject to being sufficient funds available within the approved budget expenditure. For that, can we just go down there, please, Liam? I'm reading off your screen, mate. Uh, for that project or the line item where a contract is greater than 100,000 in value, the variation being limited to 10% of the contract value. As I said, that was passed unanimously. 15.1.2, uh, the executive recommendation in front of us, which was moved by Councillor Giles and seconded by Councillor Plum, uh, pursuant to uh, RFT 2122023, Hanzo Stadium Design Contract 
and construct, accept the tender from Perkins uh, for the price of 13.6 million, subject to minor variations to be negotiated in accordance with the Reg 20 of the local government regulations. Uh, two, delegates power and authority of the CEO to negotiate and agree with Perkins, uh, minor variations in accordance with Regulation 20 of the FG regulations, subject to being sufficient funds available within the approved expenditure budget, and variation being limited to 10% of the contract value. Uh, three, subject to resolutions one and two, authorise the CEO to enter into a contract with Perkins uh, to provide the services RFT 12212023, hands all stadium design and construct. And four, following entry into contract, negotiate variations with Perkins uh, to... Uh, to the respective contract subject to being sufficient funds available within the approved budget expenditure for the project where a contract is greater than 100,000 in value and the variation being limited to 10% of the contract value. That was passed 11 votes to one. Or was it unanimous? 11 to one. Thank you. And that was that one. Minute take You have it there. That was unanimous. Thanks, media. Uh, 15.13 was also endorsed and passed unanimously that council adopts the CEO total reward package for the 2021 annual salary review as provided in the agreed schedule under confidential item. And that was passed unanimously, moved by Councillor McCurry and seconded by Councillor Tush. Sorry, that wasn't passed unanimously. That was one against. And lastly, it was proud to note the nomination for Honorary Freeman in the City of Bunbury. Uh, this recommendation that Council supports the nomination of the attached appendice and the CEO to be instructed to commence the process of awarding the title of Honorary Freeman of the City of Bunbury. Uh, and that will be announced in due time. And that was passed by, uh, moved by Councillor Gassip, seconded by Councillor Quayne, and uh, passed unanimously. Thank you, uh, councillors and members of the public and staff for your patience. I declare this meeting closed at 8.07.